Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna interview her and then not do anything. Sound good? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Spencer J. Van, and I'm here with a special guest today, the wonderful Morgan. How are you doing today, Morgan? Good? Awesome. Awesome. So today, uh, for the first time ever on the channel, we're gonna be doing an entrepreneur interview, okay? And she's a good friend of mine, and um, well, just tell us about your business right off the bat. Well, I have a piano teaching company called Piano for Kids, mm -hmm. and uh, it is, let's see, it's about five years old, and I've actually been in the teaching industry for about nine years. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And so how did, so you said you've been in the teaching industry now for nine years, and mm -hmm. for piano specifically? For piano specifically. Okay. And so obviously you played piano for much longer than that. And mm -hmm. so what caused you to one day be like, you know what, I want to, instead of just playing piano, mm -hmm. I want to take this and turn it into, you know, some sort of business or something like that. Yeah, so... I started playing piano when I was around three mm -hmm. and growing up whenever I was looking for instructors I would always look for one who was close in age okay because I looked up to them yep and who was super fun and um, just really enthusiastic about piano right okay so when I started teaching I was actually like 15 and my mom threw me into it because my sister was teaching um, she's four years older and I just started when I was 15 and I was, um, when I was teaching, I noticed the same to be true among my students. Mm -hmm. So all my students, they were coming from mean teachers who were grumpy and distasteful and they were kind of scared of them or they were too, way too strict. I mean, right. you're dealing with like seven year olds mm -hmm. and they were just getting scared away from the piano. Okay. So when I was 19, I decided to turn it into a business. Um, so around 2021 is when I started um, hiring instructors and teaching them the ropes. Okay. And so now that you've had your business, you said officially for four or five years, right? Mm -hmm. And you've had it together and you've grown it substantially since then. Mm -hmm. um, and why don't you tell them how many clients you have now and, and I guess what your future goals are with that real quick. Yeah. So we have up to around 100 students with us. And we have around uh, 12 instructors and growing. Uh, we're always actually looking for instructors because we get a lot of students. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we even have wait lists or we have to turn away students. Um, we're actually, right now we're becoming more of an, of a, um, a more like boutique piano service. So you're gonna have to go through an application now. We're not just accepting every every single applicant that comes around right so they have to meet now with certain requirements um it could be like passion level it could be even maturity level so if they're you know right now we take on four-year-olds five-year-olds but right, right. that could take too long to get them to the point where we want them to be okay so so barriers to entry basically yeah there's okay. gonna be a, there's gonna be quite a few things that um not only the instructors would have to go through to be a part of the team, but also actually the students. Right. So it really is a, an academy that um, is going to have this prestige around it. It's right. already got the popularity right now. I mean, we're mm -hmm. on the top of um, most social websites and we have great reviews. So that's always, always good. Yeah. And we're really into the community. So that really helps out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so let me ask you this. When you first got started as a business, not like when you, you know, were playing piano or, you know, you were really young and just teaching, mm -hmm. but when you went out and said, I'm going to make this a business, uh -huh. what was the first few things that you did? Like, did you go out immediately and try to get sales? Did you go and build a website? Did you, that's my, I hate people that go and build a website first. So please well, don't tell me that. Well, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I mean, for the website, I was blessed with someone who did it for me. Okay. Um, so that was a gift that they gave me, which was super cool. That's good. Um, that I don't know how often that happens, but, right. um, 
they really helped um, do the website. Like they helped me with business cards. I mean, they really they were really like a mentor to me. Right. Okay. Um. So yeah, if you can find a mentor that can really help you out with that stuff, one hundred percent, that would be great because they actually already had the connections of where to even get. Um, you know, business cards and, and connections to right, the website right, building, right. things like that. And then when that was all said and done, I just went around physically first. Right. So, I mean, I was actually on the pavement door to door saying, hey, I'm Hustling. a neighborhood piano teacher. Right. You right, know, right. like I'm not a door to door salesman, but I'm just but. a neighborhood <laughs> piano teacher. And do you have kids? No. Yes. I mean, that'd be my first question. Be like, oh, okay, here you go. Um, bye. Yeah. <laughs> I'd run away because I was like, I'm not here to waste your time. If you want piano lessons, I'm the neighborhood piano teacher. Right. And all the information's right there. So peace. And then I'd kind of, which I think some people appreciated that because I understood that like I hate it when people come to my door. Right. I'm like, you just interrupted me doing nothing. Right. And that really like mm-hmm. rubs me the wrong way. Like I was sitting down, relaxing in the sun, maybe on social media or watching TV. Right. And you just interrupted that. Or maybe I was actually working. Either way, you inter- interrupted me. Right, 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 right. You know, and the reason why I bring that up is because I see a trend nowadays. And a lot of my videos recently have been about this, okay? You guys know I hate it when entrepreneurs start a business and they do everything except for make sales and actually have a business. They go and they build the infrastructure when they have no demand. And so now she's at a point where basically what you've said now is that the last year or so, you've been at the point now where the demand is so high. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you're in a really tight niche of piano. Mm-hmm. And there's just not enough experts in the area to mm-hmm. teach that her demand is so high that she doesn't even have the supply to do it. So now she's changing her whole brand, which by the way, that explains my hat and every other video. <laughs> okay. But um, it's interesting to see from, from an entrepreneur's perspective, mm-hmm. how you've kind of dealt with that problem, because it's not a problem that a lot of beginners are going to have, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. You're not going to just get off the gate and have 8 million customers immediately. I mean, if you do it right. If you do it right, that's right. Tips from Morgan, if you do it right. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when you're building the, the the actual business and you're looking at, I mean, it took you four, three, four years to get to that point, right? Yeah, and, I, and the only reason why I, I even think it took that long is because I was 19, going to Saddleback. I wasn't even sure if this is what I wanted to do. Right. Like, full on. I mean, I was still playing with the idea because I love video editing. So I was still playing with the idea. Oh, should I be, you know, should I go into that world into that right, industry, right, right. into the LA industry? Um, or should I go and like, should I just, or should I just go into business or mm-hmm. should I go into music? And I didn't really like some of the classes, the music classes that I was taking, um, at, um, the community college, but uh, doesn't mean that they're not good right now. But it was just, at the time, maybe I just like had a weird experience. Right. But um. But yeah, the I was like still looking into video, and I wasn't fully taking it on. Um. I was just teaching all the students myself as well. Um. So I wasn't even hiring people at that time. Um. It wasn't until around like two or three years later, after having the brand and having the the website and all that, where I actually said. I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for, to school for business because mm-hmm. it's a good degree. And I'm going to I'm gonna only focus on this. I'm not going to do anything else. Right. And then that's when things just went and it, they just skyrocketed. And I think one of the huge things that helped with my success in my industry mm-hmm. was customer service. Yeah. Or in my line of work, Tremendous. when you have a service-based business, business, yeah, you need to have excellent, like, your service, you need to have excellent service, yep. customer service, I mean. 100%. Same thing in real estate, too, as a real estate agent. I mean, if you're not picking up the phone 24-7, mm-hmm. and, you know, thankfully, I don't have any clients that are, like, in Russia, so they're not calling me at, like, 1 a.m. here, mm-hmm. but I do have people that will call me sometimes at, like, 9 o'clock at night on a Friday, and it's like, pick it up, too bad, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just me. That's what I pride myself on. Now, obviously, you're in a different business, so yeah. your customer service is more working with people, you know, during the day, I'm sure, you know, I call mm-hmm. me at, like, 12 at night, but... Um, you know, having more of a, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like patience, having a lot of patience because you work with kids and stuff like that, I'm sure is important for you. And with parents too, because they're, sometimes they're busy and, um, you always want to have such a good attitude. Right. I, I mean, not even just with parents, with anybody, even in real estate. Yeah. If you're, you're dealing with someone who's looking for a house, like this is, that could, that could potentially have huge anxiety on them. So that could come across as them being 
um, maybe distasteful in a in an interaction, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that they're you know that they're a distasteful person or that they were they had ill intentions. Mm-hmm. It, it's just their day that's going. Like you you have to remind yourself of that because if you don't, you're just going to take it personally. A hundred percent. Hundred percent, especially too. In the past, you know, I've done a lot of cold calling with real estate, mm-hmm. and I'll cold call probate, which is you're calling people that just inherited a house because someone passed away, mm-hmm. which is one of the trickiest groups of people to call and call because yeah. you know it's, it's kind of like straight to the point, point. Um, and if they don't like you, they're gonna let you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really do have to have patience. You really do have to have at least in and with me and real estate, you know, you you've, I've developed thick skin because of that, mm-hmm. um, and you know it's not um, it's not for the faint of heart. Mm-mm. It's not for the faint of heart. But uh, anyway, real quick, um, what are your three biggest tips for someone that's brand new that's like, I want to be an entrepreneur, right? They don't know what yet, but that, that's what they want to do. They want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be my own boss. Okay. Three tips for them. Like in finding what they want to be a boss in? Um, finding it, and then once they find it, you know, how to go and, and proceed with it and turn it into something that's, you know, generating actual income. Um, I think it's, you know, every, every student is different. Like every piano student is different. Um, and every person when they're trying to find what they love, especially if they have an entrepreneur spirit, is going to be very different. Mm -hmm. So my way was in a way that I see in most entrepreneurs is not all. So you could be like. The one that this this doesn't apply to. The one one out of like probably a hundred or something. So very high percentage that this is you. Look at your past. Look at what's already in your life. I mean, I had piano in my life since I was three. So if you have, um, you know, if you have, I don't know, like car washing in your life, like your parents do car washing business or let's say, what does your dad do? He sells auto tools. He distributes them across the country. So it's an auto. There's auto. auto. It's his passion. And maybe it's, yeah, maybe you love cars and you're really good with, um, maybe people follow you or like listen and believe what what you say. So maybe you'd be good at um, finding cars and reselling them or like something like that. So just try and see what already is naturally in your life. Okay. Because anything that's going to be organically in your past is going to be so helpful to finding what's in your future. Okay. Um, so, like, for me, I had piano, and what I did, instead of, you know, having boring old piano lessons, I just put a twist on it. So, again, and you're going to hear this so much, don't reinvent the wheel. You're just improving the wheel. And that, when I first heard it, I didn't, I was like, that sounds like Like an old, old term. Yeah. Um, But it's not. And I've actually been hearing it a ton lately. And the more I hear it, the more appreciation I actually have for the saying. Don't reinvent the wheel, just improve it. That's how everybody, um, basically that's how our society works anyways. So might as well go with the flow. Don't go against it. Cool. So that would be one thing. Okay. Um, the second thing would be, or I guess that'd be two things. So look in the past, what's already in your life. You can even write everything down. Like for me, okay, piano and I did dance and I did basketball and I did soccer and I did volleyball (laughs) and I did art and I did, um, horsebacking, horseback riding, but I don't really like that. Um, I did soccer, but I was just like, eh, I did softball, hated that. I did, so it was just like, you look at your whole past right. and figure out what you actually enjoyed. Um, and also like what kind of comes the easiest too. I mean, I either want to be a famous DJ or have a piano business. And I saw that <laughs> being a famous DJ at 19 years yeah. old with zero DJing experience was way harder at making a lot of at making yeah. money, any type of money than it was to I've already been teaching for like three or four years. Yeah. And true. I'm already making money. So I might as well do that. Right. Um so looking in the past and what's already naturally there, maybe growing one of those things organically. Mm-hmm. Number two is um once you find that thing, put a twist on it to make it stand out and different. Um 
actually this book talks about it. Experts, um, basically it is what I just said. You're just taking something and then making it more niche. The more mm. niche you can make it, the better. Niche to get rich. Yep. Niche to get rich. Niche actually, they say rich. that in that book. He's, he's on. He, he hasn't even read that book. I haven't read it. I, I, I don't read books. I read minds. It. <laughs> Whatever. I wasn't even thinking uh, it. So you read the book's mind, I guess. Uh, right. um, and then the third would be to um, use the least amount of money or capital possible to get started. So if you can do it for free, do it for free. Okay. I like that one. If you have two options... And one's more expensive than the other, try the other first. What are we going to do? And that is that is really hard for me to do because mm-hmm. I sometimes love the flashy stuff. Yep. It's like the shiny bright toy. And I'm like, okay, what is the absolute minimum of that shiny bright toy? Oh, it's $100, whereas that's like 1000 All right, I'm going to go with 100 And then work my way up. You can always go up, but it's harder to go down. Oof. I like it. Mm-hmm. So that would be my tips. Be your tips. All right, well, I think that's it. We're going to do a networking video now, which we actually, we kind of touched on a little bit because of, uh, you talked about like how you had a mentor and the mentor had connections. So I'm excited for it, but thank you guys for watching. It will be out tomorrow and uh, we'll see you then. Peace.